Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we're going to continue our look at painting the Triumvirate of the Primark box set models. And in this video, we're going to continue our work on a Cypher. As you can see here, the cloak and the inner cloak have been done, the armor is done, and his face is done. And so now we're going to work on the weapons. For that, we're going to do pretty much uh, how they are on the box art. For that, we're going to get started with some black metal. This is from Scale 75. Uh, don't worry, if you don't have this color, you can simply just add a little bit of black to Lead Belcher if you're using Citadel's range, and just simply get a very dark color like this. I do uh, enjoy these colors as they uh, come uh, much different than uh, the uh, Citadel variety, and uh, I do enjoy how they cover on a model. And so you will see me use these paints uh, somewhat infrequently, of course. Um, but I do really enjoy them, and I do recommend them. As you can see here, I'm simply just going around uh, base coating the weapons themselves. I also did that little um, shoulder trim on his uh, on the shoulder pad there. Dwarven Gold from Scale 75. If you're not using Scale 75, you can simply use Yana Gold. This is pretty much the same value. Uh, or same kind of uh, gold luminance, as it were. And for that, I'm simply just going to get the bolter shells and the little uh, trim that's on his uh, bolt pistol on his arm, or in his belt. Um, the uh, back portion that it has this fine engraving on it on the back of his little plasma pistol will get uh, gold treatment, as well as the little gold medallions that kind of keep his cloak pinned together, as you can see there. And also his little, um, he's also got a sword uh, that's on his belt as well inside his cloak, and so the handle and the end cap for the scabbard also gets based in gold. Eggrax Earthshade in the gloss variety. I do recommend the gloss variety, although it really wouldn't hurt if you were using the regular matte version of it. Uh, the gloss variety, it sits on top of metallics very well, and so again, if you want to keep that nice shiny lustrous feeling on your metals, I definitely would recommend using a gloss uh, shade wash. But if you want to age up the metal and take that shine down a little bit and you want a more dustier, dirtier looking kind of metallic, then I definitely would recommend the um, regular matte version of it. Citrine Alchemy is next. This again, this is from Scale 75. This is a really great bright gold color that stays within the yellow spectrum rather than the Citadel brighter metals uh, tend to be uh, a bit more of the brown side of things and also a little bit closer to the silver side of things, whereas this is really more bright yellow and almost white qualities to it. It's a really great way of highlighting golds to keep a nice bright gold as it were. Again, you can see the highlights were really quick on that one. Heavy Metal is next. This is pretty much like Iron Breaker if you're using Citadel. Of course, I'm using the Scale 75 because I do enjoy these colors uh, and I'm sure you're probably getting sick of hearing that, but I do enjoy them. You can see here I'm highlighting the uh, shoulder trim and again, um, because we had the uh, we used the gloss shade wash, we don't have to go back and reestablish any highlights or reestablish the metal luster on a lot of our areas. Everything is pretty much well preserved, and of course the uh, null oil or uh, the agrax shade kind of added a bit of a, a bit of a um, brown tone to everything, gold and metal, making the metal feel a little bit you know rusty, and of course it uh, enriches enriches the uh, gold quality, bringing it a little bit more towards the brown spectrum. But that is fine. Next is Old Copper. This is from Scale 75. This is um, pretty much like hash shut copper from Citadel. And again, you can see we're simply just going to do the little end cap here, the little nozzle for the plasma flamer, and then a the little techno doodad that's uh, inside the... Uh, Inside the gun itself, it's kind of like it was a little, I don't know, like a little water boiler or something. The box art has it depicted in coppers, and so that's pretty much why I depicted it in copper here. But I uh, prefer a little bit more intricate look rather than the box art, which just has the gun as a boring old silver. Nelic Oxide is next, and of course this is to age up the copper a little bit, because again, uh, we do want to have his gun kind of have some aged kind of quality. Again, this guy is uh, a desperado who's, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 years old, and so, or at least allegedly anyway. And so he might have been around the block once or twice. Pure Copper is next, and this is just going to highlight 
those little portions. Uh, we're going to be directly applying it. We're not going to dry brush this or anything like that. I'm using a detailed brush here to apply it. And basically on the little techno do that inside the gun, I'm just going to apply it just on the ridges and the bolt heads. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to try and preserve a lot of that nylic oxide in the recesses and such. And so when you are doing your little uh, guns doodad, uh, be sure to really avoid those areas. And as you can see there, again, we have just that little touch there just to give it a little bit of an oxide, but otherwise it has that nice little rich copper feeling to it. Again, it gives it kind of that space age techno feeling. Caldor Sky is next. This is for the coils in the gun. Again, depending on how you primed your model, um, either black or white or gray, uh, you know, it's uh, going to be ap applied more than one coat. Temple Guard Blue is next. This is a really great way to follow up the Caldor Sky, especially if we're doing like a little electrodes and, you know, plasma coils and things of that nature. So here I'm basically using my detail brush to uh, trace around the coils, making sure that I try and leave uh, Caldor Sky within the recesses. So we're highlighting the uppermost portions of each of the coils, but I'm pretty much following each of the coils as we work our way around. Again, try to be very, very careful as we go. Next is a Baharoth Blue. We're going to be using this uh, in a very reduced capacity on the coils themselves, so we're not going to be highlighting very far. It's really only a couple millimeters that we're going to go on each of the little coils. And so again, make sure you're using your your um, finest paintbrush, the most detailed brush you've got. And again, you can just see how we just went just a little ways onto the coils themselves. Again, kind of giving this little pulsing glow effect. Next is a white scar, and we're basically just going to fill this in, and then we're just basically going to just overbrush the areas, kind of like just catching just the high points. You can see here, we're just letting the tip, very tip of the brush just run along the tops of those coils and giving us our little glowing effect within the coils. We're not going for a full-on OSL, we're just going for just kind of glowing coils effect. We've got even more painting tutorials in the Silver Mini Wargaming Vault. We can watch another one today about how I finish off the leather and the trim on Cypher. Again, you can sign up for a free 7-day trial. Make sure that you get the Silver membership and you'll get instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in the vault. And so thank you for watching and happy Wargaming.